whatever if you want to get into that stuff more. Are you guys all in one map right now? Should we all be going? Yeah, through? thanks for bringing that up. I was just about to say, let's have everyone group up at Citadel Waypoint at Home BL. All right. If you guys know know how to get there, press B, click enter World Rush World, and hit Emery Bay Borderlands. Or or hit the link that I put in, in map chat. Yeah. If you're in Worldly World already. Yeah. Give a second for everyone to get here. And you know how I talk about Itty being good? This is Ash of the Blaze. Don't follow me. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I often oh. get myself killed because I rush headlong and uh, 10 people focus me repeatedly. Well, hopefully you'll learn something. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know. It's why I always get killed. I'm working on it, but... Uh, Itty will show so you how to kill to entire buildings, them. so just pay attention. Alright, so let's have everybody try not to talk while Edie's talking. So now yeah. let's have Edie go ahead. Hold on, I'm typing something. Uh, so, did you go over what basic stuff did you cover? So I don't overlap on stuff. Everything, pretty much everything. So how to get how to get their gear and stuff I, like? I, no, 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 not gear or anything. Just things about worldly world. And I'm sure if you um, repeat it, I'm sure it'll be helpful because mine was pretty detailed and yours will probably be okay. better anyway. <laughs> so, a show of meows. Just type meow and say chat. How many of you are? Fairly new to World Rush Worlds. I'm nude. Okay, so a couple of you. Shut up. <laughs> no, half of you guys are in our guild. Stop it. <laughs> oh, if you're boys, <laughs> stop meowing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. All right, so the first first things first. What you want to do is get your character to level eighty. Um, so. However you do that, that's up to you. Some guilds run all leveling events, I think. I mean, PK used to. Um, there's some Karma Train events going on throughout the day. I don't know exactly when, but they're there. We yeah, you can the craft. Yeah, so Karma Train in the mornings, if you guys can attend those. Um, you can craft to level 80. You can just go through the maps and clear till you're level 80. But the basic end game for World vs. World is a level 80 with a build and exotic gear. That's the minimum. So that should be your first goal, is to get to level 80, and then find a build for your character that complements your playstyle, and then deck yourself out in level 80 exotic gear. For example, I'm a Guardian, and I like to run in an organized team. So I'm built for tanky DPS with group support. So I have um, runes, trinkets, and weapons that reflect that. So I can share boons and stuff, and I can take damage, and I can dish damage. So Keep that in mind as you guys play the game, get to level 80. What um, would be ideal things that you would go for in terms of stats, Edie? Okay, for stats, okay, so finding a build is difficult because you need to know how you like to play first. Um, I have a bunch of builds uh, saved up. If you guys are interested, I could probably link you some basic builds for World Rush World that are so. the standard. Yeah, please do so. Yeah, um, also, uh, you can. Look up build, builds on YouTube or the Guild Wars 2 Reddit post, or subreddit. Um, you can also just Google it. And but the just, Guild Wars 2 forum is actually not bad. Yeah, you can use that as well. So it's it's very important. Get to level 80, find a build that suits your playstyle, whether you would like to run solo, whether you like to roam Havoc with a small group, or like play with an organized team of 15 or more players. That's very important. You need to figure that out and then get exotic gear. Um, at the end, I will link a couple builds. If you guys want to whisper me, I can link you a couple basic builds. But let's continue. Um, so yeah, how to get your gear. You can go purchase gear with Karma at the temple vendors at Ore. Um, each temple has separate gear stats and stuff. I'm going to quickly link. That's the Dolphy guide for the temple vendors. Um, you could also buy exotic level gear through dungeon tokens if you if you like to do dungeons a lot. Um, you could also buy armor and weapons if you follow me south from the citadel. You guys follow me over here. There are Go vendors over BD here. So we can see you more easily. So there you go. Thanks for reminding me. So if you go yeah. south of the citadel waypoint, at home BL, you will see vendors around. You can purchase 
exotic level armor and weapons with badges of honor and gold. Hey. Oh, never mind. Sorry. If you guys have any questions while I'm talking, feel free to ask or type. Um, oh, I was try trying to, to talk in typing channel, Commander, better. and I used the wrong button. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm typing them would be better, though, because then AD can say things. And, yeah. Yeah, so take a moment to uh, digest all the crap that I just said. Mmm, yes. delicious. Um, and the armor stats, by the way, um, they will be dependent on your build. Um, so there is not one specific set to follow. Um, it depends on, on how you're running. Yeah, nobody's going to yell at you if you've got a novel build or anything like that. But you do want something that pays attention to you're playing against people, not, you know, AI. You can never have too many allies. Thank you. Yep. So all, remember, if you're on a non-level 80, your first goal is to get to level 80. Because the organized groups, for the most part, kind of look down on people who are on their low-level alts. Just because you're kind of a free rally if another organized group engages, right? Like if the enemy group is organized and then you go down and they have some down people, if you die, they get five rallies off of you, I think. I think that's the max. Yeah, five is yeah. it. So that's very bad. <laughs> um, anyone have any questions in regards to leveling, finding a build, gearing out, that stuff? Uh, yes, please. Uh, are you going to link uh, builds for all classes or only for Guardian? I have a couple. I have, I think, one build for each class, but I don't know if it'll suit each of your personal playstyles. Just you can use it as a base, but don't take the build that I, if I do link it to you, don't take that as like the end all be all of the builds for your class. Oh, it was Just keep that in mind. Uh, Damn it. One decent way to farm levels is the pre-reset karma train yes. in World vs. World. We don't do... I mean, they often end up as karma trains. I was actually about to say this about leveling. Um, in the mornings, Aragorn and I are usually on, and we will run groups of lower levels. We'll run alts, and it, it usually ends up being a karma train type of thing. And um, you can also learn a lot doing that, because mm -hmm. we will actually get into combat occasionally. Yeah, Karma Trains basically are groups that go really fast, capture stuff, but don't worry about defending it. Right. Because recapping it just gives them more experience, but the real pace behind it you can never have too will get, not only get you a lot of experience for your character, you. but just keeping up with the group and sieging towers and keeps, yeah. and every now and then a Zerg fight. Yeah, we'll we'll go back and defend our home for sure. But other borderlands, we don't worry about defending. So you will you will level and you will learn. All right. Um. So that covers that. Let's let's go ahead and move on to Claude. Do you have anything to add? By the way, before we move on. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on to what makes up a organized group, um, Zerg or, or however you want to call it. So let's have everyone stack up, right here. You guys can follow me. I want all the heavy armor classes to stack up right here. So all the warriors and guardians stack yeah. up right there. I want all the medium armor classes to stack up right here. That's rangers, thieves, and NGs. And then all the light armor classes on Claude. That's your necros, your Ellies, and your mm, purple yes, people. Yes. Butterflies, yes, yes. Mesmers, yeah. Alright, so... Well, butterfly people are awesome. <laughs> Not I really. actually am a butterfly so person, pretty. I kind of tainted AD. Okay, so typically, um, these armor classes are classified into three groups. The heavy armor classes are usually designated as the frontline classes. We're the ones taking the brunt of the damage, providing boons, sometimes clearing condies if we're built for it. Um, the medium armor classes are typically the midline. Um, usually, people lump that in with the backline because you guys don't really matter, hua, hua, hua. but uh, <laughs> the and the light armor are the backline. So there are th three archetypes ish that you can uh, relate to all these different parts of the Zerg. Um, there's tanky DPS, there's tanky support, and there's DPS support. So your build will be one of those three. Um, you can't obviously just be pure DPS in a Zerg, you're probably going to blow up and give rallies to the enemy. So 
I mean, if you unless you know what you're doing, don't build full glass, like full Zerker gear. Just straight up power and precision, because that you're probably going to have a bad time, to be honest. Um, so a little bit tanky in World Rush World is always good. That way you can take some hits, um, and you can run with the group and not be a hindrance to everyone. Anyone have any questions about that? Yeah, so if I'm you know that you like to play... Us. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I'm going to tell us what will uh, each line do? What is the job of each line? I... Yeah. Yes. Okay. I so was wondering if anyone had any questions. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, so the yeah, front line... Bad. Pardon? That feels good. Anyway, the front line usually takes the brunt of the damage. We're the ones spearheading the Zerg into the enemy. Um, usually the Guardians and Warriors are built tanky DPS. Some are like tanky support, like Shout Heal Guardians, um, Consecration Guardians, if you're built for like healing power and stuff like that, if you have like a mace shield or whatever. Um, but yeah, the front line will take the brunt of the damage. The mid line will provide DPS and support. So like Entangles for Rangers, Dagger Storms, um, blast finishers, all that kind of stuff. Uh, NGs, if you're running perplexity runes, which is super annoying, you can just add confusion to the groups with your supply crates and your interrupts and stuff like that. Um, backline, same type of thing, DPS support. Um, LEs with your fields, with your fire fields, water fields for heal bombs and your might stacking and your swiftness stacking. I'm sure you guys have seen Zerg stack up on fire fields and you'll see all this area might stuff on your screen. Then you'll see that you'll have 25 stacks of might. That's um, combo finish, combo finishers, combo blast, that whole dynamic. Um, I'll go over that a little bit later, but uh, yeah, that's basically what these three groups are for. Uh, Claude, go ahead. Talk about your thing. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly about the general traits for a frontline because I never play it, but there are general guidelines as to what you should be aiming for. Um, like in your attributes, saying on your hero panel, um, there's attack and power and, and critical chance and, and precision damage and whatnot. Um, frontline should be aiming to get above 3,000 um, armor, um, probably closer to 3.5 thousand. Um, and then backline should be around 2.5 thousand until you start knowing what you're doing. I like to run it just because my computer's really bad. Um, but once you get the hang of things, you can start decreasing the amount of toughness. But I would say 2.5k for a backline or a midline is something to aim for. Making it even higher is obviously nicer for, for withstanding damage, but yeah. And again, this, you shouldn't die. Yeah, yeah. and again, this all comes back to whatever build you've chosen for your class. So that's very important that you choose a solid build. Uh, does anyone have anything to add? I'd like to add something. Um, sure. In this world versus world, it's a high paced, high action. You are going to die. But don't let that discourage you. Because uh, if you look at my deaths, it's uh, 5,382 times I've died. It, it's, <laughs> it's part of the game. You know? Oh, Mark. You just get up and you, and you get at her again. So, but if you're looking for a survival trait or like uh, your survival, um, what do you call survival that? Survivability? Uh, uh, um, you, know, you don't want to do that here. I'd like to add something too. You can't do any damage from the ground. So make sure you're traded to survive. You're going to go down sometimes, but the more you can stay up, the better you are for everybody. The better you are, yes. You are yeah. going to die. And a lot of people do get discouraged because of that happening. But, you know, it, it's, a, it's part of the game. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Actually, if you guys, um, like, don't deal. Sorry if you hear a dog barking in the background. My neighbor, it's freaking retarded. But uh, <laughs> if you guys like have problems being discouraged after losing fights or whatever, um, take a break, like five ten minutes, and then come back. It's just a game. You'll have fun. Just run with people you have fun with. If you like to solo, then just I don't know. Just keep at it. Like this game should be fun for everyone. If you're not having fun, don't play the game or take a break. Says the guy who has the icon of the cat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's for a different game, okay? That game's super serious. Is that for Eve? <laughs> uh, it's StarCraft. Oh, close enough. Alright, so let's get into some fun stuff. So, uh, 
you guys have heard a bunch of people talk about combo fields and combo blasts, combo finishers, that, that kind of thing. So let's have a little uh, experimentation with it. So everyone look, go through your skills and then you'll find some skills that say combo fields and then whatever element that is, like fire or water or whatever. And then you'll also have some skills that say combo finisher. And then if it's a projectile, if it's a whirl, if it's a blast, if it's a leap, that kind of stuff. So take the time right now to go through all that stuff and see what you have that can be a combo finisher or a combo field. Can bring me down. Then we'll have some fun with that. Well, we should show them the individual ones to see how they actually work. Yeah, so we'll have uh, Claude step out a little bit. You guys stay with your groups. Claude's step out here I'm with on me. I'm my Ellie for this. All right. All right, so here's an example of a common combo feel that you will see in World Rush World. So throw down fire club. There's a fire field. Right there. There's a fire field. I am. Throw down static. Uh, one second. Okay. This there is a static field that you guys see all the time. Uh, Zergs will blast into this to get swiftness. If you guys look at your boon bar, you will see or you will see on us, we'll have swiftness, we'll have might stacks, all that kind of stuff. So these are the combinations that you can pull off with combo finishers and combo fields. So I want everyone to stack up right here on me, all groups to stack up on me. We're going to go through some fields real quick. And then some. if you have blast finishers, if you have combo finishers, just use them. So everyone drop down a fire field if you have it. And then start using your combo finishers, your blast, your projectiles, all that stuff. There you go. And then you can see on your, on your boon bar, you'll be getting might stacks. Oh, I should have had 25 stacks. Hello. I have 6. I have 15. You got 9. Yeah, thieves are the best for blasting because their yeah. short bow can spam pretty quickly. <laughs> so let's try that again. Fire fields, please. And then blast, 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 so we can get area might. You can leap to get the fire aura. Nice. All right, that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and go with uh, another common tactic that you guys see from Zergs is the burst healing. So if you have water fields, throw them down right now. Blast, 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 projectile finishers, whirls, all that stuff. Oh, look, those pretty water fields. Yay. Um, and if you were not at full health right now, you'd be seeing all things that say like area healing and regen and, and whatnot. If you can't find with your weapons any finishers, you'll have some in your utilities that you can assign. Yes. Yep. I'm going to quickly link uh, the wiki for combo fields and stuff. If you guys want to take a look at that right now, go for it. And if you find, like, as you're stacking, if you move around a bit, um, I find it helps me pick up stacks a bit more just because um, stacking counts as like how close you are to the person who either laid down the field or the person doing the um, blasting. Um, so if you move around a bit, there's a higher chance that you'll get at least some of the stacks. All right, so let's have some fun with uh, so some of the less seen fields and open fields. So if you're a thief or if you have if you're an NG with a stealth field, I think that's what it's called. Yep, smoke, smoke field. field. Smoke field. Throw the smoke fields down if you have it. Then blast, blast, blast. You'll see some people get stealth and stuff. Mm -hmm. Generally, a bit unreliable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is not something mechanics. you want to do randomly. You want to wait for the commander to call for the fields. Otherwise, it might screw something up. Yeah. Usually, in this case, it's better to have a mesmer veil. Yep. Thank you for bringing that up. Can I get a volunteer mesmer? Someone who is not in void. Do we have a Mesmer that has Veil that would like to try something? It's a little... Do you want me to go get my Mesmer? I have Mesmer with, with Veil that is not in Void. I'm pretty sure we have at least one. <laughs> right? Don't be shy. You're not graded or anything. Okay, well, I will get on my Mesmer. Give me I'm getting on mine. Okay. Um, but there's Ice Fields as well. Oh yeah, okay, so one thing Void has been doing recently is experimenting with some of the less Auras. used fields, like the Frost Aura. So if you could throw down a Frost Field for us and then blast in that, you'll see one the right Go ahead. swirling Chaos blue server. crap around some people. Yep. That's the Frost Aura. Every time they're hit, 
the enemy will get chilled. So that's pretty good for keeping an enemy locked down in like a also specific area so you can burst them. Taken. That is part of frost armor. Yes, protection. Uh, how, what's the percentage? Like 10%? It's 10% yeah. for frost armor. Yeah, so frost aura gives you 10% protection and it gives your enemies chill if they hit you with it on. So that's and then cool. there's retail fields too, um, which are a big thing if you have a retaliation, a light field. Um, do not throw it down when we're stacking unless it's called for, because if you blast into a retail field instead of um, an electricity field or a static field, um, you will get retail instead of swiftness, which will make you really slow. Retaliation incoming. Yeah, uh, all guardian symbols are retail fields, so do mind your symbols of swiftness when we're doing a static blast. Go ahead. When you're with a group, yeah, we'll... listen to the leader is what it comes down to. Okay, so let's move around a little bit. If you guys can throw up a call target on me, I'm jumping up and down. That's control T. Throw up a call target. All right, and then follow me. We're moving out. Mesmers, make sure you have Veil and Portal equipped yep. on your bar. And also Time Warp. So we're moving around. Pretend there's like an enemy Zerg right in front of us. So usually the commander will say engage or whatever or Veil. Um, so all Mesmers drop Veil in front of us. It's there. Everybody run through it and you're invisible. Yep. So Veil has no limit to how many people they can it can put invis. So that's usually why you see uh, Zergs do it. It's a really good tactic to do before you engage a Zerg. Let's move back. Um, we'll ha we'll have fun with the portal. So if you have portals, Mesmers, just throw down random portals anywhere. Can I just ask a question about Veil? Sure. Yeah. Uh, portal I, bomb I, heard, I heard that before the patch, the stealth period used to stack, but after centaur. the patch, it's not working anymore. Um, yeah, they don't stack, but if you time it properly, you can have one veil and then another veil after the, the stealth from that veil wears off, um, okay. and then time it like that. So um, Mesmer, just throw down random portals, yeah. if you can, please, but anywhere. Another thing to just um, mention, is that you shouldn't throw down a veil or any sort of stealth um, before we actually start moving and are about to engage the enemy. Um, because if you put yourself in sta stealth since the veil doesn't stack, um, it might screw up the timings. So just wait for the commander to call it out or until you know it's going to be useful. And I have to say this uh, for thieves out there, if we are going to veil for like a stealth run, do not shadow refuge. Yes, because that has a five uh, character limit. So and throw down your if, exit portals, by the way. That's what if you leave the refuge, it reveals you and you can't stealth again for three seconds. So yeah, that's bad. Um, portals are fun. <laughs> if you guys haven't had any experience with them, um, they're not really in the meta right now, just because Veils are so powerful, but they're still u utilized occasionally by some people. Um, you have to be careful, because they have a maximum capacity of people that can go through them. I think it's 20 people? Yeah. It's 20 people, but if a Mesmer goes through, they can lay a portal down and get the rest through as well. Mm -hmm. With Dagger Pistol, you can go stealth infinite times. But that's just you. Yeah, yeah, personal stuff. Which can be useful in some ways, but, you know. Because you used to be able to do the backstab, but they released the patch to where you can only backstab and there's a long cooldown for that. Alright, uh, Claude will take over for a little bit. I will be right back. Follow his do commander tag. tag do I have my tag up? No. 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 Is it there it is. Yeah, it is. Refreshing. I'm glad my I'm microphone's been muted the see. last 20 minutes. Everybody follow me, moving out. Um, and one thing that I'm hoping that we can go over once we actually start fighting people is um, positioning. Um, generally, it's front line sticking on the commander or the driver or whoever's got the tag. And then you've got the back line who run near whoever's in charge, but not on them because the back line don't have as much toughness. So if you stack or stand in their AOEs, you're probably going to die. So you want to be 
outside of their AoEs, but still close enough that you can help out the commander when they call for it. And as you're staying out of their AoEs, doing damage to whoever. Uh, I don't know if this has been said, but like how we're stacking fields right there, if uh, some fields will overpower other fields, so if a commander's calling for a certain type of field, please try not to throw That's down good. a different type, because you might You're override. Not yeah. Yeah. Isn't it the first field that's dropped is the one that gets blasted, or...? Yeah, um, yeah but sometimes yeah. people throw a second field down because that's the newest one up, They'll, that'll get some of the blasts. So if, like, we're trying to heal and there's a fire field, it won't be good. Yeah, so try to be aware of what field you're dropping. <laughs> so, it's not hit this gate yet. It's really yeah. important when enemies are on you. I'm on my way to you, Quad. Uh, talk to them about scouting when we are sieging the tower. Um, yes, so as you see here, we are sieging. Um, we've got the majority of us standing here, but um, generally we send a few people north, a few people south, just to make sure that if they are spotted, we have time to to catch up. Yeah. Generally, it's somebody who's really mobile so that they don't get caught. Um, in this case, we own the garrison, so the only people that need to scout are um, to the north. Um, just to make sure. So, for example, sometimes you'll hear a commander say, Scout's up. That's when just whoever um, wants to scout go and... Preferably somebody with a mic. Yeah, usually. And uh, you guys just go off in different directions and then relay any scouting information that yes. you have. Um, when the gate, if you're running with a, you know, with a, with a kind good group, commander. with a kind group, they'll let you know when the gate's about to go down so you have time to come back. Uh, sometimes people don't give a frick and they yeah. just like leave you there, high and dry, but whatever. And one thing just to, as a reminder, when we are sieging a gate, um, try not to auto-attack the gate because if enough people do it, we get orange swords in the map. Um, Is it 5%? I think, I think, yeah. Scouts come back? Um, That's usually what you'll hear. Kiki probably told you about it, but orange swords are bad. Gates down? Everyone uh, inside? And I'm gonna say, if you noticed, uh, Percival and I were ramming that gate very, very quickly. That is because of the yeah, rank are. three ram mastery. If you take Four. that, you basically get a fifteen, a uh, fifty percent boost in ram damage because of the speed. So if you often ram, get it. Do you give people a, a chance to catch up so they can get a chance at the guardian. You should all be here. We got a few that are lagging behind you. Oh. Okay, so uh, another weird. important thing about scouting information. If you guys are off in the map doing your own thing and you notice something that... Like you notice Zergs, you notice Golems, you notice like a uh, small anything group hitting a camp. Anything that's pertinent information, please relay that in team chat for everybody to use. Because it's really frustrating when you're like the only commander on the map and you're getting no info in team chat. You just kind of have to guess. It makes it a lot easier for the commanders to make decisions on where to siege, what to attack, all that kind of stuff. So please, if you have scouting information, type it in team chat. Um, try to be specific at the very least. Like, if you see a Zerg, don't say mag at uh, Cloven or whatever. Just say, like, mag Zerg heading towards Cloven north or whatever or something like and that. And give a number. Numbers are always nice. Even yeah, if you're you not Perfect. Yeah, 15. Ballpark, it'd be like 15 plus, 15. 20 plus. Yeah. yeah. That kind of thing. Um, one thing to reminder, I'm going to fall down these hills. Um, follow me, but take your time so that you don't die to yep. fall damage. I believe it's three seconds until the uh, fall damage distance resets. Yeah. So if you um, fall within it, you don't get the free distance again. And you go splat. So did we all make it? Oh my goodness, oh, we did. So. And uh, <laughs> dolly etiquette. When we have a group That's as a big plan. as this, hit the dolly act once and move on. Yeah. Right. Tap the yak. That's what you hear. Yeah, you usually I'll blood. say tap the yak. Just hit it once enough to get credit. That way you share the yak with everyone. Unless you're a selfish yeah, SOB, then do whatever you want. Oh, fuck. Um, Talking about you, Claude. So, I did not do that. Um, but Bay is under attack, so I think we should head there and, and help out as we discuss things. I feel good. Okay. Yeah, so that would be a good um, training, guys. Yes. Um, I put the waypoint Garrison. in, in say chat. Um, head there. Take that waypoint, everyone. Garrison yep. waypoint. 
Waypoints are free in World vs. World, in case you didn't know. Yes. Um, and since Edie is going to be our, like, actual driver, he's going to put his tag up. It's up. Okay. It's a good idea to have a call target, because sometimes a call target is easier to see in a big group. Mm -hmm. Yes. We um, have one minute timer on bay. Okay. okay. Everyone follow my tag. We're going to beeline it straight for bay. Yes. Um, I'm also going to have my tag up, just in it's case you are not bay in front line. Person. Um, just in case you're Roger. not front line, so that I can, like, you can see where I'm going. I'm going to throw on my war horn so that we can get people to catch up. Yes. All right. Um, and if we're heading for a tower, generally you don't take the, the, um, the control points. Yeah, the towers are way more important. Hey, did you talk about swiftness in the Zerg yet? Like when you're running? No. Okay, um, quickly kill these guys. Um, if you guys look through the team chat, uh, South Bay Walls is at 10%. So let's go ahead and meet up on the bridge inside bay. Everyone head there now. 15 seconds on the waypoint if you want to. If you yeah, if you're lagging behind, uh, the waypoint's, waypoint's up right up. now. Otherwise, everyone else stack up on the bridge on my side. So usually when Zergs or organized groups or whoever runs out, um, the mobility is everything in World vs. Worlds. If you're not fast enough to react to anything, you're going to lose it. So we typically have warriors with warhorns keep swiftness up. We'll have static fields to blast into to stack swiftness, so we can try that right now. Um, if you have a static field, throw it down. Down. Static. Blast finishers, please. Moving out in 3, 2, 1. Moving south. Oh. So there, um, some of you will have had the swiftness, some of you may not, just because, I don't know. And uh, Hopefully all of you got at least some. Guardian symbols on the run help catch people that have run out of swiftness. So let's head to southwest camp. Usually, I use cardinal directions. It's easier than just remembering the names on every map. Except EBG. Yeah, EBG is a special case. So let's go ahead and cap capture this control point. EBG is super special. Do you want to talk about like uh, when, like back there, we kind of all squirreled off, going in different directions? Like why right. it's important when a, when like little people come by, like groups of five. You know what I mean? Yeah, hold on. Uh, moving to Southwest Camp in three, two, one. Let's go. So squirreling, <laughs> it's one of the one of the I things that. I don't know that... if it's a commonly used term, but it's the term we use. Yeah, it's the term we use. It's when people just kind of go off different directions, do their own thing. It's important to stay on the commander just because you don't know when you're gonna when a fight's gonna happen, and uh, it's it's better to stay together as a group if you're playing with an organized team because it's just easier that way for the commander. Um, if you guys want to talk about anything else in regards to squirreling, please do so. If now. this is your first time in a camp, pick up some supplies from the yeah, pile of pick crates up and stuff. And we can go and um, repair bay well if you want. It also affects the area of effects, doesn't it? Do you want to talk about that? Static on us. Yeah. Blast us, blast. Like uh, spreading area damage among the Moving to people. East Hill, 3 to 1. <laughs> so this is what I call the East Hill. You don't have to remember it. I don't know, whatever. Um, um, when the reason would be? I usually always go this way, just because um, I'm looking out for enemy zergs and stuff. Um, usually if you're going through a choke, like this entrance, it's difficult to see outside of it. So you might get jumped, so I yeah, just play so it safe guess, and go up the hill. Either send a scout out or all of us. You should talk around. about chokes. So let's head out to Southwest Tower. Sorry, Clyde, come back. I got a, There's about 10 on the road. Roger. I got one more thing about squirreling. Um, if the commander, like, if there's five people and you can easily take them, and the commander's still running one direction, like, regardless if he says anything, like, he's getting whispers the whole time, you know? You might not see it in map chat, but I'm pretty sure Edie gets blown up with whispers. So there could be something more important going on than those five people. Yeah, so, so prioritize, guys. Um, yeah, how much can five people really do? Right. So, Claude, you can throw down rams. We'll have people build them. If you have ram mastery, Please operate the ramps. You can check out what abilities you have from yep. your world experience and stuff by pressing B. On the left hand side, you'll see rank and abilities. Click and on as, that. As far as I know, we have two people right now with rank three mastery. Uh, um, everybody with an AoE ranged thing start attacking the people on top of the walls. Yeah, okay, so this is how Void usually does their thing. Um, 
uh, I'll have people throw down rams. I'll say scouts up. I want one scout to the east, one to the west. Then I want. Then I'll say I want backline on the walls. That means if you have ranged AOEs, you'll be focusing on the enemies on the walls. Frontline will just be herp derping around, um, killing people who try to get in. That kind of thing. Hey, did you want to talk about chokes? Like how effective they are in small man group and stuff like that. Yeah, um, I'll go over that once we cap this tower. Oh, a quick thing for necromancers, really quick. Uh, you can use Death Shroud 4 if you're standing right next to a gate, and it actually has an insanely long range, so you can hit people farther behind than you think you Chat. can with it. Quick, uh, Yak's behind us. Alright, how many? Uh, 10, 15. Okay, just keep working on this gate, guys. Um, so yeah, squirreling. Uh, know when to do it. Please. <laughs> Don't be useless. Uh, I lied a lot more than 10 or 15. Everyone Everybody inside the tower, Everybody scouts come back, disengage back inside the tower. So, okay, chokes, this is a perfect time to go over it. Um, usually we'll try to let them come in so we can farm them. If you guys see my tag, you guys can go into load right now. If you guys see my tag, I'm at the top of the stairs where we came in from. This is a good choke point to hold with a front line, with a back line behind supporting. Yak spending coming, so face where we came from after we kill that lord. Face the ramp. Get ready for the Yak Zerk. Stack up, backline, get behind us. Frontline stack up right here on me. Range pressure in front, throw down your AoEs in front. Stability up. Frontline just bomb right here. Just hold this choke point. Waterfield. Quickness on us. Static. Quickness down. Dropping All right, range pressure in front, guys. Frontline, get ready to push. Pushing in 3, 2, 1. Frontline, push hard. Nice. Going deep. Alright, sweeping back into the Lord Room in 3, 2, 1. Alright, so that was pretty easy. Um, you'll see all the down, make sure you guys tag everything. Um, yeah, water blast, so we can get some burst healing. So good job guys, get ready to push in, down there again in 3, 2, 1. Backline, stay in that Lord Room. Frontline, push down with me. I'm gonna wipe these yaks inside the tower. Okay, so, um, quickly sweep and clear the tower. So kill enemy siege, kill enemies, anything you see inside the tower, do that real quick. And pick up all your loot bags. Yes. And keep in mind the secret hidden spots. There are places to hide, such as if you see me up in the Lord's room, um, you can fall down like, like, like this and then be on a special little lip thing. Um, you can get back into the tower from here. Um, and sometimes the enemies like to hide, so you just want to have one person just check, make sure. So, yeah, good job, guys. Um, when a battle yeah. happens, can there will be a lot of chatter, so... A favor, Eddie, please? Uh, can you go ahead and explain in detail what you just did now? Yep, okay, so... When a battle is about to happen, uh, there's a lot of stuff going to the commander's head. If it's a good commander who's vocal, he'll, he'll call out s certain skills, and then you guys need to do whatever the commander's calling out. Like, if, if I say range pressure in front, I want AoE skills in front of us, I want CCs, um, lines of warding, uh, poles if you have it in front, just so we can disrupt the enemy's erg in front, uh, make it easier for the front line to kill them. Um, back line, you will be providing support from behind the front line or on the perimeter. Yeah, all those yaks are coming back in the spawn wave, by the way. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm just calling out certain skills. I, I need you guys to throw them out when I call them out. Um, that's basically it. Armor, it's pretty stay simple. On, stay on the tag. Yep. Yeah. Frontline, stay on the commander. I have my tag up too. If you're not frontline, you don't have to stick on me, but it's just an idea of the range that you're supposed to stay away. Obviously, it depends on the weapons that you're running, but um, have at least one ranged weapon. Okay, now I want everyone to go back to the Lord Room. Follow me. So, notice our position here and the terrain. So this is what is known as a choke. It's a narrow uh, passageway for them to enter. Um, this is usually the best type of terrain you want to have when you're engaging an enemy zerg. That way, it's easier to focus damage on the majority of their of the enemies. So um, if you see here, from, it's super narrow. From the other side, since this thing doesn't have lips and you can easily get thrown off, um, as an attacker, you want to try and get rid of their stability and then pull them off if you can. Yep. Uh, that's where stuff like Null Fields, Wells of Corruption, etc. come in. 
Right. Uh, uh, Kiki and Huntsman or whoever, yes, did you guys... coming back in a Zerg. Okay, that's fine. Did you guys go over CC and that kind of stuff already? Yeah, I told him what CC was, but I didn't okay, know, awesome. like, CC Kiki. all the different things you can do <laughs> to make CC, so... Okay, so let's have some fun. Everyone stack up on the supply depot in the tower. We're gonna go ahead and engage that Yak Zerg. So okay. just listen carefully for what I call out. Frontline move with me, backline move on the perimeter. So get ready. Okay. We'll have some. We'll have you guys um, experience what it's like and on open so combat. Supply depot's on the bottom. Go down to the my... bottom. Yeah, and at this moment, I'm on the top uh, of the wall because that just makes more sense for a backline. Uh, if a mesmer wants to throw out an avail before that gate portal when we move out, that would be awesome. So, I guardians, if you have a staff, um, throw, if you have a fire field, throw that down. I'm gonna call out empower. That was when we buff up for might stacks and stuff. Throw down a fire field. Blast this fire field. Get ready to move out. Move out. Moving out in three, two, one. Southeast camp. Stability up. Moving east. Sorry, west. We're moving to southeast camp. Or moving to southwest, southwest camp, guys. Moving to the west, guys. We're gonna follow that yak zerg. So frontline, stay on the commander. Backline, stay with Claude if you're super yeah. scared. Whatever. Yeah. Um, generally, you don't run with two tags, so you just need to know the distance. I'm a bit behind because I went to stomp somebody, but yeah. All right. So get ready for stability. All right, I'm going to call it out shortly. Stability now. Approaching to the left. Right here, stacked up, bomb on me. Pop all your skills, dagger storms, time warps. They used a portal behind us. Moving outside. Moving out. Moving towards the tower. So they used the portal to escape. Uh, pretty death. nice idea. They're noobs. To escape death. Yak's an ultimate <laughs> running away. That's their only true skill. Hey, uh, Edie, have you talked about um, foods, eating foods? Not yet. Um, I will do that momentarily. Let's um, kill these guys real quick. divide it up into like what class people are playing and then have somebody from Void just be like, hey, here's my build kind of a thing and here's yeah. the food that I run. Because uh, re it's hard to talk for all classes. Alright, yeah, we'll do that later. Don't get everyone, too scared. Everyone knows the reason why we're, we have to stay like super close together, correct? Like the reason behind it. If no, anyone has any questions, uh, feel yeah, free to ask. You can, it's you not... can explain this point, Eddie, because uh, our random guys uh, don't also... know this point and they, they just <laughs> have the tendency to run away. Well, the yeah. reason that I believe, like, why you have to stay so close together is AoE only hits five people. So the tighter we are, the less AoE that is hitting you. And if you're all in a solid group, you can hit them like a train when you engage and down a lot of them at once and usually a lot of momentum will build off of that yeah. right so the reason frontline one of the main reasons why the frontline stick together is so we can all focus damage on five targets uh at the same time and then we'll move along the enemy zerg like that so we'll have 20 people focusing on five people we'll get them insta down we can move on to the next five enemies get them down etc etc moving to south camp okay. three two one go um the back line you don't have to stay as stacked, but again, you need to stay somewhat near the front line just in case you have like an oh shit situation where you need to get away very quickly. And do you want to talk about range, targeting? So you can you can put stuff where the commander is. Yes, that too. Do you All want right. to talk about targeting low low health players and then yes. uh, killing down players as well? That is your job as a back line. <laughs> um, <laughs> there you go. Really yeah. <laughs> That's all you get. Yeah, and that's why you tap the yak. Yeah, just the tap. Like, you've got characters like Edie who are running with 3.5 or whatever thousand armor, and then you've got characters like me who are running with 2.5. Stack up, static um, field. And quick yeah. math behind that, that's... Uh, plus, plus, plus. Around 30% of Moving north. Health. 3, 2, 1. No. Yeah, it's it just makes more 40. sense to kill somebody with lower toughness because... Why not? That's one less. That's one less attacker that's fighting against you. Yeah, and if they've yeah. got less toughness, they're rallies. generally built for damage. So taking out their damage is a good idea. And, and okay. getting rid of and getting rallies for your own team is also very important. If you got them. So just to reiterate the points made about positioning and all that stuff. Frontline, uh, we group up to focus the damage on specific enemy, specific sections of the enemy zerg. That way we can get them down faster. Think of and it as peeling an onion. Everybody's lost with Drac. Yeah, uh, we just picked um, up with another group. 
and Anybody mid and back line, you guys are on the perimeter, moving along with the front line, providing DPS and support. You're not with the front line during the battle because you will blow up. Um, so, uh, be mindful of the terrain and the enemy AOE circles. Do not stand in enemy AOE. Do not stand in arrow card fire. Um, you will die and you will give rallies off. And then that's less people for the commander to use when an actual fight happens. So just be careful of your health and the enemy AOE circles. Um, don't get stuck on terrain. I do it all the time, but I'm usually not as bad as I was about it before, but, you know. Um, I just linked a skill which, first of all, essential for Mesmers, but also, um, most characters have a skill like this, which, um, mine is both a stun break, and it teleports me a, a distance, so, like, I just used it to go myself over on the stairs. Um, that is useful, especially as a backline, because if they start targeting you, it allows you to break the stun and get away, but it also allows you, if you need to, to port to the other side of a big pile of AoEs. And, yeah. Moving north, three, two, one, let's go. We're gonna hit that so, control point. Kiki links a blink for an Ellie, which is very useful, and pretty much all of them run it. Yeah. And then a couple others are running, um, like, Skara, he, um, linked, um, the Guardian one. Like, yes, but Flash is not a stun break. Yes, it's not a stun break, but it is a blink, um, which is also useful for different reasons. And one other nice thing about Lightning Flash is that it doesn't interrupt your channeling, so you can like start a meteor shower and blink away and channel the rest of it in relative peace. Yeah. Yes, Ooh, but that's nope. very profession specific stuff. Yeah. Also with but, uh, meteor shower. If you go into tornado form after you cast meteor shower, it'll increase the damage of your meters a lot. We'll, we'll do that yeah. sort of stuff in the individual profession. Yeah. So just to generalize what's being said, know your skills, um, get accustomed to your class, uh, know yeah. when to use your skills during the fight. If you are a guardian, um, do not spam all your shouts <laughs> right when the fight happens. Learn to space out your things. You do, you guys don't have to panic when a fight happens. Just be mindful of your health. Listen for the callouts if you're in team speak. Um, look at uh, team chat if the commander is typing to everyone. Um, just know when to use your skills and just don't panic. Keep calm during a Zerg fight if that happens. Just yeah, just be intelligent about your use of skills and stuff. Oh, and I wanted to bring this up when Drac Dracman was passed by. Uh, if you're running with the commander, join their squad, and all the other commander tags will disappear so you don't get lost with other commanders. Simply do that by clicking on the commander, right-clicking the little top bar, and it'll say join squad. Yep. Also, also if you don't have supplies, them. it'll tell you how many supplies you have up on your top bar. That's what the little barrel on the right top center of your screen is. Alright, guys. Um, we're going to go ahead and waypoint to Garrison. I link the waypoint in say chat. Go ahead and waypoint there, guys. We got ourselves an army now. Let's yep. yeah, we do. So many people. Let's see what else I need to go over. It's pretty sexy. Oh, okay. okay so now that you guys nice. had have some experience um, with actually fighting quote unquote a Zerg, even though they ran away the second time, uh, take take a couple moments to digest everything that's been said tonight. Um, I know it's a lot, it could be overwhelming for some of you, but just take it bit by bit and you guys will get better and better in World vs. Worlds. Uh, we need more players in World vs. Worlds if you want to stay competitive and just really hope that you guys work towards that and join join a guild. Even if you're not in a guild, join their, ask if you can join them in TeamSpeak and run with them. It's a lot of fun. Um, Void's always willing to accept people in our channel to run with us. Um, Although, if you are on a low level, I will ask you to get on level 80, just because I don't want rally bots. Um, so yeah, let me let me link the World vs. World wiki. Um, a lot of the stuff that we've gone over is on that page, so you can refer to that at any time. Uh, yeah, if anyone has any closing thoughts and stuff. Know your skills. Does anybody have any profession-specific questions they want to talk to a world versus yeah. world professional about? Yeah. Um, not you, Asher. You're an NG. Nobody <laughs> cares about NGs. No, I w I think I was gonna say um something along the lines about depending on your class, condition damage can actually do be very bursty. Yes. Ironically. Yes. Um, you can go for straight DPS or you can go with conditions. Um, either yeah. works. 
generally so you want to stack one or the other. So I'm going to take my tag off. Um, if you guys see in team chat, a scout has types info in team chat, which is awesome. Around 10 yaks bends people at Southwest Tower. If you guys want to go ahead over there, that's fine. I'm going to take my tag off. I'm going to start a raid with Void in a little bit here. Um, if you guys have any more questions for me, I can send you guys uh, builds. If you want, just whisper me and I can, I can get you. Um, and if you want, and you're on a level 80, you can come and finish, finish the night with us. The reason yeah. behind, like, not having level 80, or only having level 80s with us is because it makes it really hard. Because if we get 10 people down and that one squishy player gets downed and killed, those 10 are back up and we have to fight them again. Uh, I think it's 5 though, but yeah. But, uh, oh, okay. yeah, some levels are squishy. Very squishy. Same thing. Same difference, I guess. Okay, so yeah, I think that's it for me. Yeah, Thank I'm you guys for LE listening. Talks. Sorry, I'm gonna do yep. LE talks in Void's uh, dungeon channel. Not that it's appropriate for it, but just if anybody wants to talk about the profession, I'm an LE. I'll be in there. Void dungeon. We have one um, of every class, I think. That'll be there. We've tonight. got at least one of every. Class. Yeah. Um, and if you don't have time to ask tonight, you've got time to ask at another night. Um, you start to notice people who run around. Um, some of them are absolute trolls. So, um, yes. Oh, yes. No names. Um, because I got the whisper. Um, what is the rally exactly? Um, a rally is um, when you are getting attacked, eventually you will go down. Um, you won't be dead first. Um, but then if a different player, like if one player from the other team fully kills you, um, anyone who has attacked you enough and is in the area from their team is going to be able to rally as in like they will no longer be downed. Um, you know, you know what I'm saying? Don't, don't come, come back to a rally normal, is when like you don't damage to a target and you're in a down state and the target that you damage dies, you will rally. Yes, that is what I mean. Um, it's like an insta-res, and it will happen to up to five people, um, or maybe it's ten, I don't really know, it doesn't really matter, the point is that it happens. I just wanted to say thank you to the organizers of this event thing, this is pretty good for Emery Bay. Hopefully more people get uh, interested in Wolverish World because of this. Thank you for your time, Eddie, and thank, uh, thank you all from Void for sharing this information with us tonight. Hopefully yep. uh, most of our guys got... got Amount of information. Mm -hmm. um, and the information to share it to everybody. Yes. Um, and just to reiterate, more individual help can be had. You just need to know the people to ask. Um, map chat's not always the greatest place to ask. Um, but... <laughs> There's, yeah, you'll find some trolls in yeah. map chat. Um, and Northeast Tower is under attack, so I'm going to head there. Yeah. Anybody wants to come and help? <clears throat> yep. Uh, are we just going to stay in this channel or are we going down the void? Uh, void will move, Starly. Okay. Second.